And also, I would like to, you know, ask you about your favorite subject. I hear it over and over, and uh, I would like you to elaborate on slow practicing. Hi. Okay. <laughs> Well, I will tell you, I would tell you a, a sentence that I keep constantly repeating. If you practice slowly, you forget slowly. You know, uh, you know, I, I feel that the practicing um, with, did, did Mr. Le ever discuss with you the way to practice yes. or you or you knew because you were a very good practicer. Yes, so, but, but that happened when I became her student. She, so she did talked she, a lot did, about practicing. You don't know how to practice. See what I mean? See what I mean? You have no idea. You're saying practice slowly. You don't practice slowly. I practice slowly when just, I just... I practice slowly when I need to. <laughs> and so slow I... is a relative thing, right? Listen, who do you trust? <laughs> well, I you know I, I practice not only slowly, but I believe in practicing in rhythms, which a lot of people different don't. different patterns, right? No, just two. I mean, I I believe in just two patterns. Dam ta dam ta dam ta dam, ta da ta da ta da ta da. Those just two, you know, dot it and you know, and that's it, you know. And you do like, I believe you do like 10, 15, 20 times one rhythm, and then you do the opposite one, 10, 15 times. But if there are triples, then there must be three, or you you don't care for the oh, no, I don't I don't do it. <laughs> Toby, you disagree with me sometimes on, on, on that one. I don't know. Because Rhythms, I, I, no, I, 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 I want to say this in all seriousness. I mean, he really doesn't practice slowly, but what he does, which I think is very unusual, is he brings a certain kind of focus to his practicing. So what, what do you mean? What does that mean? Well, first of all, let's talk about what is focus. This is the guy who played through an earthquake. The chandeliers in the hall were swaying. The hall was creaking because it was moving. He was playing the Ives Sonata, right? Where? In someplace California. In LA, someplace. In California someplace. This is years it. ago. In the early 90s? 1990 was 94 or something? I don't, rem I don't remember the, 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 the yeah, but it I don't remember either. He played through the earthquake. He didn't know there was an earthquake. <laughs> That's what I, that, so that's how I define focus. That's the kind of energy he brings to his work. Yeah, but So we, all of us mortals, we practice it again and again and slowly and in rhythms and we listen, we try to listen. He might only do that a couple of times. Well, I, I, you see, I'm, I think and I'm a good enough. judge. I'm a good judge as to what, it, what, what is needed as far as what I, what I feel, you know, what I feel, what I need. Uh, but I do believe that, you know, practicing slowly is incredibly important, but even more important is to practice in a, say, in, in, in a way that you can actually hear what you're playing. Because the thing about practicing that is so obvious is that the repetition, you repeat over and over again. So you want to make sure, and I always, I always recommend practicing in small segments, two bars, five bars, or whatever it is, so that everything that you play, for example, for intonation, that it's perfectly in tune. Because if you practice slowly and you repeat, and one note is slightly out of tune, you learn how to play that note out of tune forever. <laughs> you know? So you want, you want to make sure that everything is just right. And that's why I recommend doing it in small segments. So do you have control of everything, whether it's the left hand or, or the right hand, you know, whether you produce a sound because the repetition is what makes, what, what helps the, the practicing. And then what I've been saying is that sometimes I find, I don't know what you find with your students, that sometimes they practice everything slowly and then they bring it to you and they play it slowly. <laughs> as though they cannot play it faster. And I said, can you play it a little faster? And they do. And this, they're surprised that they can actually play it faster because it's like they bec it's like becomes a habit. And all of a sudden they say, well, I cannot play it faster I, it, it, because that's the way I've been practicing it. So I said, I say to them, after you practice everything slow, try and see if you can do it faster, just for fun. You know, you're alone in your room. Nobody's going to kill you if you made a mistake. You make a mistake, and you know, people are surprised that they can actually 
trust, you know, after a while that they can actually get more of a speed in the, you know, I just had something like that yesterday. Uh, somebody played the Paganini Caprice and, you know, kind of slow. And I said, can you do it faster? Wow, it really worked. So trust in your practice as well. Do you practice without the instrument? Do I practice without the instrument? Just in your head? Oh, maybe, you know, if I, you know, if something, yeah, not really. What, 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 what? Well, I was thinking of the story of when you were a little boy and felt in Christ. Oh, yes. Well, that, yeah, but, you know, I, I always was, I was looking for uh, uh, reasons to practice without the instrument. <laughs> <laughs> and when I, when I was growing up, you know, when I was like 10 or 11, you know, I hated practicing. And my parents took me to um, this uh, guru, this person, his name was Feldenkrais. I, I have a feeling that some people know who he was, some older people know who he was. And he believed in, you know, working with the brain and so on. And he, and he said to me that, you know, the brain is so amazing, you can actually practice with your brain without actually playing. And I thought that was great. You know, because whenever my mother would say, you're not practicing, I said, no, 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 I'm practicing in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful, wonderful story. <laughs> but I, I, I think, you know, I find practicing, <laughs> not this way, but in real, in real um, sense that, you know, especially on the airplane, there's plenty of time to think about the phrasing, just in, in even to feel, to, to develop some kind of inner, uh, sense of connection that you are really trying to imagine ideally how it would sound, not the way it would come up because of the some some kind of uh, obstacles or something I, which was. I most most of the time when I play when I play uh, I, I do it as I play. I don't I don't plan ahead. So it's very natural for you. I I, 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 I get inspired by the music. And, and so this this is this is for you was always the path you didn't have you didn't have to really think about this so much or change you felt that it's really coming if you know the piece you have to learn of course the notes you have to learn certain details but then it comes through yeah, your absolutely. inner voice absolutely and and also you know you have to rely on the music that you play and especially when you repeat things you know when you know you play the you play the prank sonata uh, how many times. One time, one, twice, three times, 10 times, 20, 30, 40, what do you do with it? So you have to kind of rely on the music and, and, uh, and not just say, well, you know, I'm playing it like that because that's the way it goes. You know, that's that always the bad thing to do is to play because the, you know, the, the reason to play something is to find something in inner something in the music as you play it but not to just automatically play it, you know, here I make a diminuendo, here I make a retardando, and that's it. Because everything is, should be alive. To say every, every, every concert is a, is a new experience. Otherwise, you know, might as well get a recording and say, you know, I mean, I'm going to uh, play for you my recording and that's the way I play, you know, but that's the difference between that and the live concert. So basically you uh, answer that question we talk about this, what was uh, so special about the older generation of musician? I think it was something unique because they were really, it was happening the moment they were playing. You could feel that the music comes the moment they play. I thought so, I thought so. I remember. Per perhaps, uh, perhaps it's something maybe should be very encouraging for younger students to hear, because I think very often, the problem is they learn a certain way. They know exactly how to do it. They, they, they know the, all the tools. They know how to use them. But they don't really use this sense which you just explained, that they let the music go through you at the moment, at the moment when you are performing, the moment you are on the stage. That, that's, that, that's, about, that's, my, that's, my, uh, that's my way of doing it. That's my way of doing it. Yeah. It's wonderful to hear it from you because I think it's it's most important thing that we are capable to go on the stage and not to be worried about anything and just to let well, this happen. And that's the trick, right? Not to worry. <laughs> you go on stage and you know, I mean, worrying is is will 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 take away the spontaneity. 
you know, right. you're, you're concerned about intonation, you're concerned about the bow. Yeah, but after all is said and done, the great artist is compelled to play a certain way. The great artist has no choice. It's like breathing. 